Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Icon, and in this video we're going to take a look at how you connect to your camera. Now the first thing you need to do when connecting to your camera is ensure that you have a well-charged battery. So we'll charge it right up if you can, and if you have external power for your camera, that's even better. Now the next thing to do is ensure that you have set up your camera properly. So to do that, you just need to go to the preparing your camera help. and find your camera in the list here and apply these settings to the body and you make these settings using the LCD menu on the camera body and we have a separate tutorial video on preparing your camera so once the camera has been prepared now you need to connect it to the computer using a USB cable and ideally this should be the USB cable that came with your camera uh, from Nikon. Now you can use other cables such as uh, third-party cables you may buy somewhere else but you never know the quality of these cables and some of them don't work very well at all so if you're ever having any connection problems go back to using your Nikon cable first to help troubleshoot the connection problems. If you solve the connection problems then you can always try different USB cables. It really depends I think on the quality of the hub and your cabling. Right now I have the D800 hooked up to my PC and uh, with about a 12 foot cable going to a USB hub and about a 4 foot cable going from the hub to the D800 and it works pretty good but I've tried other hubs and had some problems with the connection and once I removed the hub the connection seemed to be okay. So it can be hit and miss so when troubleshooting always start back at your first Nikon cable and then work outwards from there. The maximum length of a cable for USB 2 or USB 3 is 16 feet. So anything longer than 16 feet and the signal will start to degrade. If you need to go longer than 16 feet then you can get active or powered USB cables and these allow you to have quite a long cable run and I've heard of our users with cable runs over a hundred feet using these powered USB cables. Okay, so once you have your cable plugged into the body, just confirm that the connector is plugged in snugly into the body. Now some bodies, the connection between the cable and the body itself isn't really rugged, and you might want to ensure that it doesn't move around very much. I have some camera bodies that it just seems to wiggle no matter what I do and so I'll use an elastic band to kind of keep it in place. Some bodies like a D800 come with a mounting bracket for a USB cable to keep that USB 3 cable connected firmly into the body. Okay, so now you have the cable connected to the body. Now let's connect it to your computer. Now it needs to connect to at least a USB 2 port on your computer. Some bodies use USB 3 and if that's the case you can either use the USB 2 or USB 3 port. The USB 3 of course is a lot faster and you'll notice it especially on a body like a D800 where the file sizes are massive. The file transfers are very fast. Really good if you're shooting video too because the video files are huge. Okay, so I have a D800 connected to this computer. I'm just going to turn on the power switch and let's see what happens. Now this is the first time that this has been connected to this computer. So initially here on Windows 7 you'll see a message here where it said installing the driver software. That can take up to several minutes. Uh, Windows XP and Vista computers can take even longer. But until you see this message that it's been successfully installed, you will not be able to connect to the camera. The key thing is to see this icon here and this is the standard camera interface that comes with Windows and so you can browse the files and the memory cards. And you can even delete them. Now there's a quirk with the Nikon drivers and the Nikon SDK in that when you attempt to connect to your camera the more files that are on the memory cards, the longer it takes to connect. And you'll notice this because if you look at the back of your camera, at the green LED, you'll see it flickering as your camera's attempting to connect. And normally it should just flicker for one or two seconds and that's it. 
But if you had a lot of files, a lot of images or movies on there, it could take minutes. And you'll see that green light flickering for a long time and you'll think that, hey, there's a problem here, it just won't connect. Well, it's because there's just too many images on the camera. So I'm just going to remove these. Okay, and I'll close this. Now let's see what this looks like in the device manager on your computer. Your camera is going to show up as a portable device. And if you're ever having problems with your connections, you can come into the device manager and you can uninstall it. And by uninstalling it, next time you power on your camera, it will attempt to reinstall the drivers. Now I have heard of instances of our users using our software and it's connecting just fine for months on end and there's no problem and suddenly it no longer connects. Well, what's the problem? You know, it could be the cable, make sure the power is okay, but quite often Windows will come along and do one of its automatic updates and it could clobber the drivers for your camera. So the way around that is to uninstall and you can see it's no longer there and it won't appear again here until I turn the camera on and I'm just going to turn it on now and you should see it reinstalling there it is on the bottom and we have our icon back here on the taskbar now once it has been installed once when you turn it off and back on you won't get to this message about installing a driver I'll demonstrate. First I'll turn it off and then I'll turn it on. So this is what you want to see before you start using Control My Icon. If you don't see this icon here that means that Windows cannot see the camera and if Windows can't see the camera Control My Icon can't see it either. Okay so let's try connecting now to the camera now that we know that the USB connection is okay. So the first thing to do is pick your camera off the list and it matters which one you select. So if you have a D600 or D610 the camera will connect with either one of these. However, there are certain features available in a 600 versus a 610 inside the program so you'll find that the program will not function properly so make sure you pick the exact model that you're using and in this case I have a D800 okay now to connect you click on connect it should take about that long and now you can see that all these boxes are enabled on the bottom left you can see the battery level and the current profile. To disconnect a camera you just click on disconnect. Now the power on the camera is still on because we can't flip that physical switch on it. So if you wanted to connect again you click connect and disconnect again. If you want to turn the power off to your camera you have to go over to the physical switch and turn it off. If you attempt to connect and it hangs on the connect and so these do not become enabled and they stay all gray, there's some different things you can do to troubleshoot it. Let's bring up the troubleshooting list. So click on how to connect and it brings up the connection help. The first thing is, is to confirm your body and the Windows operating system. Some bodies that are older, such as a D40 and D80s, if you're running them on Windows 7, you'll need to set the program compatibility mode to Vista SP2. And that's just because the Nikon drivers aren't able to communicate to those cameras just in native Windows 7 mode. And to change a compatibility mode, you just go to the desktop or wherever you have the controlman icon shortcut right click on it properties 
compatibility and then you can go right here run it in compatibility mode for Vista Service Pack 2 if you're using Windows 8 and it won't connect try using Windows 7 compatibility mode or Windows Vista SP2 compatibility mode if you're attempting to connect and it's taking a long time it could be that you have too many images on the memory card so you can either remove the memory cards or delete those images from the cards to help it connect faster so let's take a look at the other items on the troubleshooting list okay make sure you have the correct camera okay good and that's important because you can have different cameras with different profiles here so uh, maybe by default you have a D800 in the portrait mode you're using your D600 just double check that you have the correct camera selected make sure that cable is firmly attached on both ends into the computer and also into the camera and if for some reason you no longer get this icon down here try plugging the cable into a different USB port onto your computer now USB ports can be a little bit tricky in that sometimes they don't supply enough power to the USB device some laptops will often have USB devices which automatically power down after a certain amount of time or never provide enough power to the USB port at all to have a successful connection with a camera try using different ports if you can or try plugging the laptop into AC power so that the USB ports no longer will shut down and uh, to enable that they deliver as much power as is needed now some older cameras need to be in PTB USB mode so if you have one of these older bodies find that in the LCD menu on the body and set it to PTP USB mode if none of that works it's time to try powering things on or off the first thing to do is to shut down controlman icon and power off the camera then power on the camera make sure you get the icon down here indicating that the camera is successfully connected to the PC then start up controlman icon and attempt another connection some cameras or more sensitive than others for failed connections and we see this all the time when we're developing with these cameras if you were to try to connect to a camera then disconnect or connect to a camera then unplug the USB cord and this kind of generally abuse the connection sometimes they'll just refuse to connect until you restart your computer restarting your computer actually restarts the WIA service that is running on your computer and this is the Windows image acquisition service the Nikon drivers use this to help connect to the camera but you can restart this yourself and all you need to do is when you are disconnected go to the file menu and restart WIA and this is going to run a batch file that requires administrator permission and it's going to restart the service and there it is being restarted so then attempt to connect your camera again so now if that didn't work just try rebooting your computer and if that doesn't work go to the device manager like we looked at earlier and try reinstalling the device driver for the camera and finally double check your Windows power saving options because there can be options in there to power down a USB port now if none of that works and you still cannot connect try going over to another computer plugging in your camera to it power on the camera make sure you get the icon down here and see if you can run controlman icon on that computer and that may help you and try to troubleshoot the differences between those computers and uh, or you may find it's just a, something like a USB port issue so that's it that's how you connect to your camera using controlman icon happy tethering